Hi students, now that we've had a chance to play around with some of MATLAB's built-in functions, I wanted to show you how to create your own user-defined functions. And um, kind of a general rule of thumb for when you should be creating a function is if you have some kind of a code block that needs to be implemented more than once, and if you want to organize your code by functionality. Um, so kind of the general framework is you'll have a main function and um, we can create that today. We'll just call it main.m. And then we'll have another script that um, has to have the same file name as the name of your function. So um, the first one is, I'm gonna call this my main function. And in my main function, suppose I wanna create a variable called um, temp for temperature. And I'm just going to set this to 25 for 25 degrees Celsius. And then what I want to do is I want to write a function that's going to convert the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new script. And then here's how it works. The first line of my function needs to start with the keyword function, followed by if I have no outputs, um, if I have one output, that's going to be my output is going to be the temperature in Fahrenheit, so I'll call it temp f is equal to, and then the name of my function, I'm going to call it convert um, c to f. So that reminds me what I'm doing. And then I'm going to open up a parenthesis, and inside of my parenthesis is going to go um, the Celsius input that I want to convert to Fahrenheit. Okay, so this has to be the first line that's in your function. And then when I hit return, uh, MATLAB's automatically going to create this end function here, and that's just going to kind of cap it off. And so these are keywords, function, and end function, and all of your function code is going to go within these two words. So now just to make sure that I don't forget, I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to save this as, and um, I call this convert C to F. My file name needs to exactly match that, and it's case sensitive. So if you just copy and paste, you'll be sure not to make any typing errors, because even if you forget um, the casing somewhere, it's not going to work. So MATLAB's going to look for um, it's going to match this word with the file name. So that and make sure that you have that. And then, um, like I said before, this, this is just a basic function. It's going to produce one output, and it has one input. So the output goes here after the function keyword. The input, it's just like how we use the built-in functions in MATLAB. It goes as an argument inside of these parentheses. And in the next video, I'll show you how to handle multiple inputs and multiple outputs. But just as kind of like a first function, we'll keep it nice and basic. Um, so now what I'd like to do is I'm going to take in this input temp C. And then I have to do a conversion on it. And whatever that result, I'm going to store that into a variable. And um, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can just store it directly into temp f, which is my output variable. And MATLAB's going to see that, um, the value that's stored into temp f, and it's going to basically spit it out um, once we run the function in our main script. The other thing you can do is you can create an intermediary variable, like you can just call it um, my temp or something like that, and you can set it equal to your conversion. And then after that, you just have to make sure to send set temp f to my temp and then um, because the the wording of this variable is what is going to be returned by the function to the main program okay great so i'm just going to kind of skip that step and i'm going to directly call this temp f and um, my conversion is 32 plus whatever my input variable was so this is my temperature in celsius and then that gets multiplied by 9 fifths, so 9 over 5. And um, here's my conversion on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So the compiler is going to compute what's on the right-hand side. It takes that result and it stores it to the left of the equal sign in that variable temp f. Now, um, if I save this, 
then down here in my command window, I can test to make sure that it works as I want it to. So I can create any variable. It doesn't have to be called temp C, but I'm going to use this as um, my input. So let's say I set this equal to 25, just like I did in my main script. And then I want to um, convert that to Fahrenheit. So the way I'm going to use this, I'm just going to type in the name of my function, convert C to F, and as my input, I'm going to put in T. Um, now, sometimes student gets, students get confused because they think, well, this needs to be named temp C. Um, this actually doesn't need to uh, be named the same thing. In your function definition here, up that I have in my editor window, um, this I'm naming the variables to remind me what I'm using them for. But I can actually use this function with any input variable that I want. So let's see what happens. Um, I get an answer that gets spit out 77. Now, if you guys remember from previous videos, if I don't set this equal to a variable, then MATLAB creates a variable for me called ants and it's going to store that answer. So instead, if I want to explicitly store my solution in something, a variable, I can store this in something like um, temp in Fahrenheit or something like that. It doesn't have to be exactly exactly temp f. And then I can set that equal to my convert function, convert c to f with my input t. And now um, inside my variable temp f, I have this value 77, which was the result of my conversion. So um, it's, you might be wondering why I'm calling this temp in F as opposed to just temp F. So I think this is a, a habit that some programmers get into is when you're operating in like the command window here, the interactive window, or you're writing something in your main function, calling your uh, variables something different than what you did in the function definition helps you to remember that um, kind of the difference between a global and a local um, modification. So within the function, there all the variables are going to be changed locally. So if I have another variable out here in my command window or in main that I call tempf, that's actually not the same tempf that's within my function. So um, it has the same name, but it's not the same variable. And if I do some kind of a computation in my function, um, that is not going to change any variables that exist outside of the function, unless they're global variables. So um, all of the variable modification and changing that's being done in your function is local to that function only. And the only way that you can, that the main function has any knowledge of what happened inside of that function is if you return a value. So if you function produces an output. So our output's called temp f and um, that variable temp f and temp c are basically only used from within my function. So that's the reason why it's um, it's kind of nice to call your variables in your main or your command window something other than what you use to define your function. Just to kind of keep in mind that those aren't the same um, variables and if we wanted to call something tempf in main, it might be a little bit confusing because um, the modification that happens within the function is not going to change anything that's outside of the function because it's only um, operating locally to the function. So we'll talk more about global variables later. That's one way that you can make the function um, modify variables that uh, are defined outside of the function, but we can, we'll talk about that in the, um, the next few modules. So um, now that I've used my command window to test this, um, <clears throat> the operation of my function, I can go up here to my main function. And this is basically where I want to copy the code that I know that works. So I'm going to control C, I'm going to control V. My input variable, instead I called T. So here, um, this, the main function is where you are going to define your variables. And this is going to be used as an input to my convert 
c to f function, and then I have my output. So we're going to call the function from main, but in our function definition script, this is where we define the function. And um, it's a good idea to put a comment in here. You can put your name at the top and you can explain what this function does. So this is convert C to F. Um, I'll say takes in, in input in Celsius and outputs the converted Fahrenheit value. Okay, so this reminds me what this function is doing. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this as my main script. Main.m. And now um, when I go to run main, main is going to actually do the calling of this function for me. And so the, this function is kind of like embedded within my main script. So I don't actually have to see any of the computa computations that occur. It's occurring behind the scenes. I know that it works and um, everything is, is as expected. So this is a good way to kind of organize your code blocks if you have a main function where you do your um, variable declarations, you call your functions, and this is also a place that you would do your user input and output, and then you'll have separate files for all of your functions. So um, what else should I tell you that would be interesting? If you saw how I these lines look pretty similar, this function declaration line here in my function definition file, it looks pretty similar to how I actually call the function. Um, and just remember that you want to call your function, pass in an input in the parentheses, and then you need a variable to like catch the output that's prov provided by this function. So I'm catching the output in my variable called temp in f. And then from there, if I wanted to, I could display this temp in f to the user, or you know, simply I can just delete my semicolon there, and then the value that's stored in temp in f would be spit out on the command window, although it doesn't really tell the user what exactly it was I was doing. So um, in the next couple videos, I'll show you how to put in um, a display with a string that also includes the value of a variable that you have like to report um, what was the result of a computation, this computation that we're doing. Anyway, um, so there's just a, a quick example of how to define a function and how to call and use it in MATLAB and let me know if you have any questions.